Ho Internet, welcome back. Today, we are going to be seeing a car per se, but I a, have a commission to convert a 08 Mustang GT body harness to accept the Coyote uh, computer, just like I did with my car, but I don't have the car and literally the guy sent me the entire body harness, which I didn't realize. I told him, I'm like, well, I need every, the whole harness that's connected to the 50 pin connector that connects the PCM. Well, that's the whole freaking car. And not only did he send me the harness, it came from Kuwait. So I'm gonna kinda show you what I'm gonna do there. I usually don't do this as a service because I'm working on something to make it plug and play. So until I get that going, I agreed to uh, do it for him. And we'll see uh, how it's done. Oh, mind you, this is gonna be a very slow and happily boring video for all you guys not super interested in the wiring, but we're gonna show you anyway, so let's go. I don't, this isn't the hardest or anything. This is actually off of my car. I was kind of practicing with some pins. I have the blank 70 pin connector that goes to the Coyote computer. This is the body connector. Now, excuse the paint in the hands. I've been doing some Fox body things on the customer's car. And so the meat and potatoes of the swap, as you may remember from our other videos, is to make that get adapted to the body harness of the early S197. So I got some pins from Molex. That's for the, the project I was telling you earlier for the swap uh, harness. But there is in this box our guy's entire body harness from his 08. See, got quite the mess. You also might have noticed he gave me his uh, 2012 Coyote computer to send to Paul by the hour to get the pads deleted. Also told him I needed the 4.6 engine harness all for this. This goes to the, the fuse box and we need uh, to tap into some power wires and whatnot uh, to create the inline to the Coyote harness. Definitely tell it's an automatic transition harness. And I'm gonna steal I don't think I'd have to steal anything else from this harness. As you can see, we got this big Johnny over here, and it's unfortunate to send the whole freaking thing because this is where the meat and potatoes of the swap is. And basically, I'm gonna do a little different this time. I'm gonna unpin the connector and do and just put the pin, take the pin out and repin it into the Coyote one. So it's gonna be very clean. Other customers that have used my guide on my from my website. I've done that same method. So we have the, the fuse fuse box connectors there too, in line there as well. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be needing that per se, but I have my book and I'll know exactly if I'll need it or not. All this other crazy crap, not needed. So it, yeah, it's a lot of bulky work just to do the there. But along with that, I'll also know where, yeah, he doesn't have the under hood engine harness. so. Uh, unfortunately, I was going to try and match where the MAF would go and the AC line, but I'm just going to have to approximate those. And what else was there? Uh, the low pressure AC, I'll actually be able to, it should be in here somewhere. I'll find that. It should be on the plug that's coming back out, probably over here somewhere. So you can tell this is kind of where it goes through the firewall and here's another one that comes out of the firewall and it should be a four pin but i'll get that later so like i said i'm just going to start off by doing all the connections in the 50 pin and transfer them to this connector first we're using my handy dandy spreadsheet that is also available on the website so i can keep track everything and can pick up wherever I leave off. I gotta go, you know, go have dinner, whatever. You can check your progress here and it'll show up over there. Easy peasy. I'll start by uh, peeling back this harness here so I can, it's more workable. Get the uh, wire protector there. It has that official name, I forgot. Uh, and then uh, take off the uh, 
TPA insert, as it is known to be called, and then you'll have access to unpin it like that. And you have access to all the pins, and then you can transfer it. All right, so I got the uh, inserts all off. I will most likely, if I remember correctly, the only thing that I'll need off of this will be the oil pressure sensor wire, because everything else as I recall, won't be used by the Coyote. So it'll be like one big connector for just one thing. Anyway, um, I kept the grounds kind of taped for, for location wise. I don't want to like lose their location in the loom. So it'll all kind of bolt back together. I'm ready to tackle the first wire and insert it in there and kind of work back. I got enough wire back here to kind of let this hang out. And all right, one down is the uh, starter Starter wire is the first one that is in that 50 pin connector. So you notice the, my first one's the MAF, but I have to make a, a separate harness, breakout harness, and I, I'm just gonna do the ones that I can transfer the pin. Yeah, clip it in. So that's from pin two on the four six to pin seven on the five oh, and we'll just continue, continue down the line. All right, I got all the simple straightforward pin to pin connections. You can see the orange is what's left to make connections. Most of that, I know six of those are throttle pedal, three of them are AC switches and yada, yada, yada. Um, there was a few splices like the 4.6 has four ground wires in the, in the big and the 5.0 has two. So luckily they use the same one and a half millimeter pin, so I just went in there and I spliced the four wires together to, to the two. The power wires, however, used the smaller pin, so I just put the uh, bigger female terminal in there and all's good. So, making good progress on converting this harness to the Coyote. And I'm gonna take a little break and then start on the more complicated stuff. Right back at it. Let me get you caught up where I'm at. So, like I said, I got the simple pin to pin all transferred to the 70 pin Coyote. And I started to get some of the power feeds and cooling fan triggers from the fuse box connector. This is the C1035B. So this is actually part of the 46 engine harness, which is what I required and requested from a client here to supply the body and engine harness so that I can get this connector and swap it over for him. So I thought I was gonna have to add more pins, but I realized, oh, at the end of this loom is, you know, the engine connector for the PCM. So just had to untape that. And then, then I actually know that the length will be perfect to the body connector on the other, side of the header. So that worked out pretty good. So those three pins, one is power, two of those are the high and low cooling switches, tied some ground together, like I said, and now I'm looking at this and let's see if I can find it quick without boring us too much. I'm looking for the accelerator pedal connector. I found it, oh yeah, there it is. So, I haven't gotten the pigtail yet, but if you watch the other episodes of when I did my car, I cut this off and I have this in the guide too, to wire the Coyote accelerator pedal connector kind of because it is different. This is eight pin, the Coyote is six. It was a little difficult to do another dash. I'm gonna do that again, but I get the uh, ability to do it out here. And also gotta transfer these pins over here. I wasn't gonna do that first. I realized, oh, I thought I was gonna make a breakout harness. It's already in, in the car. It's already there. So I'll transfer the, the six pins for the pedal to the, from the four six to the five volt connector. And then later on do the pedal connector re-splicing. All right, so now I'm at the point where I've done everything I can do without getting any pigtails involved because I still need the engine, or not the engine harness, but the body side of the Coyote in line which kind of looks like that, but we're going to use a repair harness to tie in all the end lines to the power feed, AC control, and starter wire on that, and 
shrink to the stuff I don't need. So we're making progress. And like I said, we're gonna need a pigtail for the accelerator pedal. Replace that and we'll keep on parting. All right, we're back at it again. I got a few more items in this box or package is the Ron Francis MAF wiring extendo kit. A little more uh, economical for uh, getting a MAF pigtail. And this is, whoop, on the floor now, the uh, connector for the high pressure AC switch. Pedal wire, I believe. Depends on what this next one is. Oh yeah, that, that last one was definitely the pedal wire. This is our inline that uh, will uh, be on for the trans. So it'll be somewhere near, I'll show you where it goes, but this is for the trans and then I'm gonna reuse the one from the engine harness that will, anyway, point being now it's time to get all the harnesses and wiring done that isn't just repinning. So I'm gonna have to make a harness break out of here for the math, like I said, redo the pedal harness somewhere in that mess and then show you what I'm going to do for wiring the uh, low pressure AC in series it's going to have to come back I'm just going to do a jumper here because it goes to the smart junction box we're just going to mess with that I'm going to do it like as if it was in the car like I did last time and then of course do the the trans harness so for whatever reason the audio in the next couple few clips was just like garbled and wind noise so what we're looking at here is that C1035B connector at the fuse block and this yellow wire is the starter relay output so that actually gives the starter solenoid its 12 volts after its relay and I guess I'm talking about this in great detail and looking back at the connector we're about to make that's the first connection because that's pin one from what I recall. Next up, more corrupted audio files from our video, but we got the Ron Francis MAF extension here, as you can see. We're giving a good thorough inspection here. It's just like your OEM that fits an 05 to, I think, current Mustang MAFs or Ford um, mass airflows. So it's got a little longer than a pigtail, and it's really convenient because it's just about the right length you need from the ECU connector to the mass airflow. All right, so it might look like a mess, but I have the majority of the harness done. We have the transmission in line all wired up. So let me explain something real quick for you guys that might not follow how all this conversion works is the connection to the fuse box is in the four six, that little item there. And so what we're doing is keeping that and kind of making an interface to the transmission harness and everything, all the other feeds that need to come from the body, ground, and that connector to the trans harness connector. So that's all done. It needs to be wrapped up, of course, but as you can see in the 4.6 body, PCM body connector, there's only a couple few wires in there. Those may not even be used. Uh, I've referred to my sheet, but I have my C110 done, that's the transmission connector and majority of the body connector for the uh, PCM, which is here. Um, and most of those, I know four of those are for the MAF and three other ones are for the AC. So I gotta actually make out my own harness and then do the pedal and then make the low AC switch in line with um, the high pressure AC pigtail that I gotta make. So I'll get these harnesses, these pigtails ready. I showed you earlier, the math, you know, yada, yada. And then keep on cruising. I mentioned there was one connector that I haven't converted yet, and that was the 
engine inline. So these actually are the same on the Coyote the 4.6. I just went to verify, see this is an engine harness on the internet machine. It has the male side of the connector and this is the female side on the body. So the 4.6 actually has a whole bunch of wires that um, the inline on the 5.0 does not use. And all the, the connectors, there's 16 pins on those connectors, but only four wires get used by the Coyote. So I just have, I think even one translates and you won't even have to unpin that. And there's the, I think the oil pressure sensor is the same wire across the board and so on and so forth. So I think I'm gonna tackle that next instead of doing my breakout harnesses. I don't know why I'm putting those off because it's a little daunting. I do need to get some more wire and whatnot to make my own harnesses, plus make sure they're the right length, kind of lay this out a little more and get an actual S197 um, under the hood and, and measure for from where like the computer is to the high pressure AC and the MAF should have enough in the Ron Francis wiring. So this is what I'll tackle next and then we'll do the breakout harnesses. All right, so I got all the wires pulled back and removed that aren't gonna be used on this side. As you can see, there's a little cap here you pull off. And then you just hit the tangs, you can remove them. So the only wire that corresponded was the oil pressure sensor. That's one of the few gauges in the early S197s that are non-can bus. It's direct. What's really funny is though, like in the manuals and even on here, like you have the other pins being used for power and stuff, but then in the connector on the body side, they're not even, they weren't even used. And some of them were just like these two, going back to the 4.6, so those will just be disregarded. And there's only a couple other ones that are like a, for a power steering switch and whatnot that will be also omitted. So according to my map here, all I need to do is give the fuel injectors power, the coil power, coils, and other component power like sensors and whatnot so a whole whopping four or five wires and luckily so one way you can do it is just cut these off and splice them in or when i put new wire in and splice either power from there or there which would probably be from there because it's on its own and fused i have a whole mess of wire connectors or wire pins i should say they're the same style as the bigger pins in the PCM connectors. So that's kind of neat. So let's make that harness. All right, as so I'm whittling down this harness job here, I got the inline for the Coyote all done. I found the, I realized I didn't have the correct male or female uh, pins in here. They're actually 2.8 millimeter. The only kind of oddball ones in the inline, the, the, these ones actually share, I think I told you earlier, they share the, the pin size of the bigger pins on the body PCM connector. So got the component wire, all the component power wires and the oil pressure wire. And that's all checked off on there. So we're good. That's literally just giving it all the power and one little oil pressure kicker. And not quite able to loom it all up yet because now I'm gonna do the math. And I think I'm gonna make this a lot longer than it needs to be because I don't want it to come up short on the customer. So I think the, the Ron Francis is just, just a little short, so I'm gonna add three wires. I don't have to use all six. I already shrink tube the, the two wires I won't need. And then I'll lengthen these wires and then we'll go directly into that connector and then they'll have a nice long breakout harness for the MAF and then after the MAF we'll do the pedal. Okay so getting back at it like I said I got my Ron Francis MAF extension those two wires not needed and I had to extend it about five or six inches to make this total 48 inches I was lucky enough to have a and this one I seven in the shop now to uh, get a reference on where the body connector is on the PCM to where the MAF connector hangs out. So we got this laid out here. Now I'm going to add three pins 
to the appropriate wires so that I can hook directly to the PCM connector. And then the one red wire is your 12 volts. And I'm gonna tie that into one of the many 12 volt ignition sources in the harness already made probably from either, you can go from pin 67, I believe it is, yeah. 67 or 68 are your ignition for the, the PCM itself. This one is going to our inline, and I'm not sure if I want to tie in that. That is a kind of a low voltage. This isn't using a lot of amps, the math is, so maybe I'll just tie into that, and that's because that's feeding the injector and the coils to the, the engine, so not sure what I'll do yet, but I got options. I think I wanted to touch on now that I got the terminals on the end of the wires here is, for whatever reason, the Ron Francis, I don't know if they're following older uh, Ford models here, but the, the colors aren't even close to at least what a Coyote car uses for their math. So at the end, I used colors that are very, very close that have salvaged from the engine harness. Like this is supposed to be violet and gray for the I, it's for the IAT intake air temperature, um, blue for the math return and yellow and violet. It, whatever you get the idea but they're close ignitions always usually red but on here it's um green and yellow or gray and yellow so you get the idea as long as you know where the pins go and stuff but i like to make the colors as close as possible to uh with the factory in case you got to go back and diagnose it all right the math harness is complete ended up tying into pin 68 so it's kind of got a little dedicated uh power so uh, looks like things are getting messy but i'm actually gonna tape this up for the the first when I'll be able to kind of loom and get things kind of organized. I know it looks daunting, but uh, this is why I make the guide. And this is why I'm coming up with something else so that this is more plug and play for you guys instead of if you're not, you know, comfortable with doing a lot of wiring. Moving on, got the accelerator pedal pigtail swapped. Now mind you, the 461 uses seven wires and the Coyote one uses six. Uh, there is the pin three, uses the same colored wire as, I believe, pin one. Yep, so that one just uh, gets to hang out, goes back to the computer, and that is that. So, yeah, we'll just tape that up, put the loom back, and that one's done. And then, oh man, I guess I'll make out the breakout harness for the air conditioning high pressure switch, along with tying in the low pressure switch to um, in series and I'll show you how I do that in a little bit. But yeah, we're cruising along and only tape this up a little bit because I'm gonna use some loom so it'll kind of be organized. I could probably do that like, you know how I did every other one, or a little staggered there. To kind of clean things up a bit, might just do that in the meantime, but accelerator is done. Moving on again, added the high pressure AC switch, kind of, it's right below the MAF sensor so I kind of added a little, bit of a length there. But, so you have to add this harness separately to the, the body connector because that switch, which you also have to change to either a V6 or a Coyote car switch, they are actually the same switch, which is weird. The 4.6 uses a four pin. This is a three pin. Luckily there's a Schrader valve in the line so you can change the switch without having to discharge the system. Anyway, Usually this is in the engine harness, so that's why you have to make out the breakout harness along with the MAF, because the MAF is also in the engine harness on the 4.6. So that's all done. And now I got one last piece before I, I'm gonna test each circuit for continuity at each pin and whatnot, is to add the low pressure switch in series with the AC clutch request wire. So it's in this mess. I'll show you in a little bit. I probably did it earlier in this video. Uh, so, because Coyote cars uh, don't have a low pressure switch, they use a temperature sensor in the evaporator core. So you kind of have to, I had to be creative on how to make this work. I got a, a tip from a guy in the S197 forums named Juice, who uh, when I was originally asking uh, to hardwire my own Coyote swap, he did the same thing and kind of led me to uh, do it this way and mine works just like it would on factory. So basically got to find the switch, run wires. I'm going to lay this out a little more and I have to basically not tee into it like we've done every other connection, but put it in series. So one wire 
will come out of here, go all the way to the switch essentially, then come back and that wire, the return wire will go to the, the body uh, or the corresponding wire so that it kind of will interrupt that clutch relay signal wire to turn off the AC in that fashion. So after a little bit of contemplation, I think I might utilize my inline connector that has plenty of space in it. So what I did, I actually on my car, I made a separate one because I wasn't as educated on how to like redo these pins and which ones you need. So I'll just take that apart. But this is the switch connector. Uh, it's a four pin connector, but it's only using the two wires. So that would have to, I would have to like literally take this, these two wires, run it all the way through the spaghetti madness and back up into here. What I did on my car was just cut it, make a kind of like a mini harness that goes across the engine because it's, you know, going to beeline. I could probably actually show you on this car. So that switch is down there. And then what I did, I just, oh, obviously this is still 4.6, but on a Coyote car, I just made it in line or made a separate harness and then made my own little connector here so it's serviceable and then parted on. So this switch is supposed to go to the smart junction box. Now there are some similar colored wires in here, but I don't think they're the same ones because they do use a lot of the same color and tracers for a lot of different things. But I'm gonna figure out the most efficient way, but I think I'm going to use an inline, whether I make it my own little harness, measure it out from there, or backtrace it and see if I can actually just make a shortcut within the existing harness. All right, so I salvaged enough wire from this low pressure switch from the harness, button it back up, won't need it. And my thoughts on using the inline would be great, but I don't have the engine harness and I don't, my whole goal, even when I was doing my own car, was to not modify the engine harness so that you could, uh, you know, pass this, so other people wouldn't have to modify their engine harness. You just don't want to do that. So in case you got to replace the engine harness for whatever weird reason, you don't have to worry about repinning connectors on it and stuff on the new one. So I'm just going to make this part of the, part of the body harness and you'll just have to disconnect this or move it out of the way if you want to service it. But I'll just uh, tie these two wires in series to my number, uh, let's see here. The AC request, which is here. My pin 12. So that's somewhere in the top row. Pin 17's on there, so it's a little further back. So just have to cut into that, put these wires in, loom it up. And this baby's done, and then I'm gonna literally wrap it up. It's like that. It's tied in in series. I'll show you what that kind of means. So you have the relay output or ground trigger for the AC going out, it's going to the switch, comes back to this green wire and going back to business as usual. So it'll interrupt that when the pressure is too high and disengage the AC clutch. So that is the last little tidbit of making this harness, at least in its rough shape. So now it's time to make it look pretty. So I started kind of taping up some things here and there and how I want it routed. Might have made things a little long, but this is going overseas, so I didn't want to make it too short. I'd rather have it uh, too long. Like that's probably a little too long, but that's okay for the AC high pressure switch. So I'm going to get that all buttoned up. going to be able to reuse the uh, cover for the engine harness or the engine connector from the 4.6 and use it there because uh, my new ones don't come with that. So usually not a project I commission too much, but him being overseas, a little easier to bring this over than the whole car per se. I'll touch back on my guide. It's available at make-it-modular.com. I'll have a link in the comments. Could have done it without it. And you can apply this guide to your own Coyote swap in your early S197. I do have enough information to do all four years, 05 to 09. So let us know if you want to do this swap. Avoid you from using the control pack, you just get an ECU, which for this project, we actually sent uh, ECU out to power by the hour to have the pads deleted. And then you just need trans harness and engine harness. And then you just do all this work. And you know, Bob is your uncle. It's only like 80 something wires, but I am starting to develop a plug and play swap harness. So if you're watching, stay tuned for that little jewel. I'm actually gonna get a test part in tomorrow so that I can see if my 
idea will work. So stay tuned for that. So there you have it, pretty much literally all wrapped up. We got our MAF harness, low AC switch, high AC switch is over here, all wrapped up, trans, engine inline, and the meat and potatoes, the actual Coyote PCM body connector and accelerator pedal. So this 08 harness is ready to be sent back to the customer and so he can complete his swap. Now, like I said, I usually don't offer these kind of services, but if someone is willing to strip their entire car of the whole body harness and send it to me, I'll be happy to help you out. So is that something that you uh, wanna do? Have that service done? Please let me know. Leave my email in the description. And now, I got the computer back from Power by the Hour, so that's Pat's deleted, so I can ship this all back to uh, Kuwait, where this guy is from, and he can party with his Coyote Swap. All right, package all up, ready to go. So yeah, thanks for sticking around. We uh, got that all wrapped up and now sent out to the customer overseas and across the border, and they're gonna be able to enjoy their first gen early S27 Swap Coyote with all the AC work and cruise control, all the gauges, just like it was from the factory. So not a normal service we offer in Make Module, but since it's becoming more popular, I got all the equipment and parts and finding a way to do it. So if you're interested, uh, please click on our website down below or leave us a, a comment on any questions you may have on this type of swap. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please like and consider subscribing. We'll see you next time.